All right, magic makers. I want to talk to you today about this concept called tiger time. And this concept first came to me when um, I was listening to a podcast by a woman by the name of Amy Porterfield. And she, her podcasts are more focused towards people who are growing a business. And at the time, it was right when I was starting um, my business, my business journey. And, you know, she was just giving a lot of good productivity advice. And one of the productivity pieces that she gave was, it's a concept called tiger time. And it is, you know, her definition was creating a ritual around a specific time in your day, where that's the time you're going to get stuff done. And you are going to protect that time like a tiger would protect their, their bear cub. No, their tiger cub. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Their tiger cub. And this concept resonated with me because I've been thinking about it a lot because as we head into, you know, this year, so many of you have all of these goals and dreams and ambitions of all the things you want to get done. And the number one reason why I hear people tell me they can't commit to something is time or, you know, time got away from me and time always seems to be, you know, in the top three reasons why you don't seem to hit your goals. And I really like this in, and I don't really know why I never brought this up because this is what really helped save me. I didn't have a name for it. It was just, I had to put box out time specific for, for me to get stuff done. And I feel that many of us don't do that. We always will take health and fitness and we will just kick it down the road until at some point something happened and it literally has to punch us in the face <laughs> set itself on fire to say, hey, girl, hey, you got to pay attention to me right freaking now. And there's, you know, time is always the reason why people stop or they don't stop, right? You know, they'll tell me, oh, when the kids get get out of school or back to school or the kids, this, that, whatever, um, my parents, my husband, my wife, my this, my that, my that, everything under the under the sun and you know everyone else's needs are here and you slowly find yourself sinking to the bottom bottom and not being consistent with that and you you know or you're doing it and you're like I could be doing so many other things you know this just isn't important to me and I bring these up not to make anyone feel bad I bring this up because these are things that I say to myself too you know and when I was listening to the podcast about Tiger Time, it was like, you know, when I first started this business, I was still, you know, full-time training at the gym. And it was really easy for me to say, you know what? A client just called and said she can come earlier. So she can come at three instead of five. I would, and I blocked out the time to write a blog post, to do a podcast. You know what? I'm going to run off and train that client so I don't have to stay later. And then of course I would train at three, I would train at four and that time at five o'clock was, oh, I'm going to do it at five o'clock. I was tired and I didn't want to do it. Right. So, you know, I know that, that cycle that you just, you get into it, it's easier to not do than to do. And so here's why we have to, you know, start to really kind of come up with the times of day that we know that it's going to work for us. A time of day that we know that you know, life isn't going to life for us. And we are going to fiercely, you know, block out that time and protect it like we would protect our tiger cub. And, you know, for you moms out here, you know, so many of my moms, when they finally, you know, get into the groove of working out and doing these things, they're like, you know what, it makes me a better mom. I'm less likely to snap at my kids because I've done a little bit of something for me that I'm more, you know, I'm, I'm more present with my children. I'm more present with my family because I have taken um, the time, the time away from me. And so, you, you know, I know you've heard it a million times and I'm going to say it again, because maybe this is the time that it sinks in, you know, your health is your wealth, right? Move it or lose it. And um, my parents live in Florida and I was just there for Christmas and every time I go visit them, you know, I will see somebody who struggles to get out of a chair you're going to be getting up and down out of a chair up and down off a toilet for hopefully the rest of your natural born life don't you want to have the strength to be able to do that right i also see you know a lot of people who are overweight a lot of people who are just struggling to just eat the right stuff and trust me it ain't that insure stuff it is not that is just full of chemical malarkey 
that's me being politically correct. It's a chemical malarkey. And if you are looking for a protein rich drink, please let me know. I have something that is way more beneficial for you than that crap. All right. Off my soapbox. Back to you. And so I see it all the time, right? I see these things that could have been prevented had I taken 15, 20 minutes to focus on my health, right? And I don't, and I don't know why it is that like, it has to be like, something has to be on fire for us to put out a hose. And the best thing I've ever heard on this podcast, and I will say it over and over and over again, is that if I don't hear my body whisper, I can't hear it scream. And for many of you, your body are whispering. And so many of you are like, I'm tired. I'm tired of being tired. I'm, you know, I have no energy. I'm exhausted. I don't sleep. All of these things. And I will tell you that exercise and eating better is the foundation for you, my friends, especially if you are over 40, especially if you are fighting any type of perimenopausal problems, nutrition is paramount for you to start. It's the place to start, right? I know many of us want to get this like magic pixie dust sprinkled on top of us. Yeah, I want magic pixie dust too, but it doesn't exist. If you know of magic pixie dust, holla at your girl, because I want that too, but we don't have that. It's not available. And so I want you to um, say that health is just as important as anything else. Health is important as just as your job. Health is important as being with your family. And so when I see those people in Florida, it just reminds me of what my long-term goal is. And my long-term goal is I want to be able to easily stand up without having to like, you know, move and groove and have, you know, someone help me out of a darn chair. But I also want to be able to walk on my own two feet. You know, I don't want to have one of those like walkers with the wheelies. That's, that is my, that is my ultimate goal. And frailty is, I I haven't looked at the statistics, but frailty is one of the main reasons why people um, lose their independence. And for many people, when they lose their independence, like, you know, it's not that long before they're like, they have to, can't live on their own. And that's my goal is to be able to live on my own, God willing, knock on some wood for as long as as I humanly possibly can. Uh, Cause when we lose that, our mobility, that's the, that's when everything starts to set in. And I don't mean to go to scare you or doing like that. I just like, those are the thoughts that come to me when I'm like, you know what? I don't want to, but I'm like, you know what? I want to, when I'm 80, <laughs> You know, and I'm a lot closer to 80 than I am to 20 these days, which I'm sure many of you listening feel the same way. All right. So tiger time. So for me, my tiger time is my workout and I fiercely protect that. And I first, you know, when I look back at like how I started to like build these rituals around my workouts, build these rituals around my food, it first started out when I was working in corporate. And I worked for a woman who literally was like the double wear Prada, you know, and she was just horrible. And I was just working my butt off. And one day I was like, you know what? I, I, I just can't like, I'm like, I am just so fried. And I was 25 years old. I'm like, what 25 year old is like, I'm fried, <laughs> you know? And one day I happened to be, this is when newspapers were still a thing. I was flipping through the newspaper and I saw there was this kickboxing class and I was like, oh, you know, that's right around the corner from, from where I work. And it was having a free trial. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to that class. And it's at five 30. And I was like, you know what? I'm leaving at five o'clock. I don't care what she says. I stay late too many other times for it to be an issue. So I went to the kickboxing class and I fell in love and I was like, and he taught on Mondays and Wednesdays. And I was like, you know what? On Monday and Wednesdays, I am getting my butt out of here and I'm going. And let me tell you, it just, my mood just changed dramatically that I was like on Monday and Wednesdays, I was like, you can treat me like crap Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, but Monday and Wednesday, I'm leaving here at five o'clock come hell or high water. And I'm going to that kickboxing class. And that was like the first like kind of boundary that I set for myself. And back then, you know, we didn't use the word boundary, but that was a boundary that I said, I was like, I am not missing this class. And if I missed it, it was, there was a, there was a very valid reason, not because she threw something on my desk at 515, because she, she used to pull that crap. And if she did drop it on my desk, I'd be like, Hey, um, and I told her, I was like, Hey, um, her, her name, I'm going to change the name. Hey, Sally. Sally, I, um, I have that kickboxing class tonight. Um, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do this tonight, 
but I will do it first thing when I get in on Tuesday. And it started to train her that like, you know, this last minute stuff wasn't going to fly anymore. And that I was like, Hey, I'm like, Hey, totally. I'm on this. I will do it on, on Tuesday morning, right? When I get in, I'm like, if I have to come in early to get it done, great. I will absolutely come in early, but it ain't happening right now because she was the queen of dump and run. Like she would dump it and be like, I'm off and off to whatever the hell she did. And so I was very, you know, protective of that time. So I want you to start to think about, you know, is there, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I love classes because find something that you like, find a class that you like. And, you know, I teach and that's, when I teach, that's one of my goals is that people want to come to my class clearly, right? But people want to come to my class, they use it as their boundary, their boundary for whatever else is going on in their life. They're like, you know what, this is my hour. And I want them when they come to my class that they can just forget, you know, that someone else is in charge, someone else is telling them what to do. They don't have to do all the damn thinking. And that's what I look for, you know, when I go to a class is that I don't want to do all the thinking, right? I just want you to just, I want to just be immersed in the class. So that was the first kind of like first, like kind of, you know, a little bit of tiger time that I, I, I set up and I didn't really have a name for it at the time, but it was like, this was like, I needed this in my life so that I didn't feel like a like piece of fried chicken. And then I kind of like let that, la- you know, then the instructor that I absolutely loved, he moved away and, you know, I just, I just fell out of it, but I still, I fell back in love with working out. So I still was, I was still was working out and I still, you know, made Monday and Wednesday my time. Right. And, and it wasn't like, I tried to say, I was going to work out every single day. It's still, I still stuck with Monday and Wednesday at five thirty. That was my time. And then I started to travel a lot more. So I couldn't really stick with the 5.30, the evening workouts as much because I was traveling 80% of the time. Um, so then, you know, fast forward, uh, right after I got married, um, my husband and I started working with a trainer and we were working out at night because, you know, 80% of the world starts working out at night because it's after work. It probably for like a month, like he and I both were like, oh, you know, a meeting ran late or this ran late. And we, and we were working out together. And then like one of us couldn't work out together, blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, excuse, excuse, excuse. And so the, the trainer said to us, he's like, well, what stopped you from working out in the morning? He's like, and at the time we were literally working out with him at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. He said, what stops you from working out in the morning? You guys come here on Saturday morning. Like, why can't you work out in the morning after Monday through Friday? And we're like, huh. Would you stop using logic against us? <laughs> we just never thought of it. So then he's like, you have to set a bedtime. And I'm like, all right. And then, honestly, you know, we were staying up till 11, 12 o'clock at night. I wasn't curing cancer. I was not solving, you know, the world's problems. So, you know, we started to have set a bedtime. And again, that started to be a little bit of a tiger time. It started to be like, hey, nine o'clock started to wind things down, shut things down. By 10, 10 30 at the latest, lights out, and we were in bed and we were up heading to the gym. And that's something that I've kept for a really long time. Then I started training. And again, I started to let something creep into that time period. And I finally said to myself, you know what? My goal here is to earn enough money that I don't have to teach first thing in the morning. That's my goal so that I can go back to having that like first part of the day be Kim time. And I will tell you, like, when you find that spot for you, and we'll talk about how you find that spot for you, but that was, that's paramount. Like you are going to protect that time like a tiger from time to time. Yeah. You know, I might have a dentist appointment that might pop in there. I might from time to time have to sub, but if I'm going to sub at that time, it's going to be like, I am your last defense, right? Because I protect that time so fiercely, you know, like a a tiger would protect her cubs if they were in that, that time slot. And so I have, you know, that's, that's my time. That is the time that I'm like, I devote to that workout. And for many of you listening, you know, it doesn't have to be like two hours, three hours, doesn't have to be that amount of time, but it's like, you put this time in your calendar and you block it out. It's, this is happening. It's not, well, you know, if so-and-so calls or if work happens or if, 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 no, this is happening. And you have to give yourself like, really like, it has to be 
a straight up emergency for you to not um not not do this and so how do you you know get to this tiger time it's huge it's a huge mindset shift for for many of you right it's huge and so first you have to define like what what is your tiger time what is in that time what is going to happen and for me you know my tiger time it, it's you know it starts at quarter seven you know i i used to you know physically go to a gym and i used to be at that gym at like six o'clock and then when just COVID hit and the gym's closed, I was like, you know, I don't need to be getting up at six o'clock, you know, because we weren't going anywhere. I'm like, I don't need to be getting up at six o'clock. So I shifted it to seven. I was like, you know what? My alarm goes off at 645. And I am downstairs. Uh, I still work out at home. I I fell in love with working out at home. So shockers of all shocks. Uh, so my workout starts at seven o'clock. So from seven to eight is my workout time. And then from eight to nine is my like, you know, coffee time, my journal time, my like ease my way into my day that, you know, that those first two hours, it's Kim time. Now, yeah. Can I eat away into that second hour? Sure. Absolutely. But that first, the, you know, from seven to eight on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, is my workout time. That's 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 the time I carve out to uh to work out. So I want you to think about to yourself, you know, like what is, you know, what's that time zone? And then commit to it. Do it for at least 30 days. Say, you know what, start at start Monday, heck, right? So even if it's the fifth of the month, start and just say, hey, for 30, the next 30 days, seven to eight is going to be my time to work out, my time to meal prep my time to just sit on my butt and just take a deep breath, whatever you want to be in that tiger time, you define what that is for you. And then put it in the calendar. Like I said, my tiger time is Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, boom, that's it. It's happening in the calendar. And, you know, if I'm making appointments, or if I'm making a dentist appointment, I'm doing my best to make it on a Tuesday or Friday. And if I can't get it on a Tuesday or Friday, then, you know, I will interrupt it. But I try my best to move, you know, 90% of the time, I am going to move something around that time um, in my calendar. And if it's for something that's working out, it could start as simple as 15 minutes. You know, it doesn't have to be this big thing. You know, um, if you uh, use the hashtag uh, Fat Burning Friday on it's anywhere on the socials, I have several workouts that will are 15 to 20 minutes long and if you add the right weight and intensity you can kick your own booty in 15 to 20 minutes and then it's like you know what in that time what do you need to do like what do you what are you trying to accomplish in that like one to three must-haves in there so for me in my in my tiger time it's like I'm strength training that's the primary focus and then if I have time left over I'm sprinkling in some cardio right that's that's my that's how I structure my tiger time. I also have tiger time in my business, you know, like blocking out the time to do do this, right? Blocking out the time to actually sit down and do the podcast so that, you know, I'm consistent so that every Wednesday you are, got me in your ears. Uh, that's, you know, the first, you know, that's a, a tiger time for, for, for me. I, I, you know, usually it's Thursday morning, I'm sitting down and I, I'm, I'm getting it done. You know, Friday afternoon, I'm sitting down and I'm doing all of my, um, my, my social media and my planning for the next week. So I have these little pieces throughout my week that helps me stay on track. And, you know, I, I see it all the time, you know, uh, I had to slow down to speed up in order to get to where I am right now. It wasn't like I just sat down, I'm like, this is how Tiger Time's going to work for me. It didn't work that way for me. It was really about um, just sick of, sick of being, get sick of not getting done what I wanted to get done. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I just got to get over my stuff. Like I have to like, I get, I have to get so pissed off and frustrated with myself that I'm finally like, okay, what can we do to change this? And I just sat down and I was like, okay, I have to block out this time. If I don't block it out, no one's going to block it out for me. And, you know, what are the things I'm trying to get done and what are that I, I keep skipping over? And it might have to start with a time audit. 
I know that recently I did that in my, uh, in my business. I was just like, yeah, I'm just not getting all the things done that I wanted. So I was just like, what exactly was I doing? Where was I spending the time? Like, and then I had to be honest with myself. Was there things that I should just stop doing like straight up? Just why am I doing this? Then I had to look at are the things that I could delegate, you know, the things that I, you know, I have a great lady, Liana, and she's listening to this right now. So she's probably just smiled, um, but she, she's a great helper. Like, what can she do? And, you know, we've, we've had a call that, you know, we're like, she's been with me three years and I'm like, Hey girl, like, can you take on more stuff? And she's like, what you got? And so, you know, it's really asking for help, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a paid helper. It could be your family. You know, a lot of my women, I'm like, they're running around with crazy. And I'm like, can you have someone else help you with dinner? Do you have to be the person who helps you with dinner? And they're like, well, you know, they'll cook crap or they'll say eat cereal. And I'm like, but if you say no, that's not how, it, you know, can you say, hey, how can I help you make dinner more effective for you other than saying I'm putting out a jug of milk and a thing of cereal and you know one of the th ways that I've helped my husband help me with dinner is that we use HelloFresh right it's I two two days a week he cooks and it's a HelloFresh meal he pulls out the card and it's paint by numbers you know it's just that's that's how I get him to help me out with dinner and you don't even understand how much of a I don't, I, I, it's just so freeing that the, these two nights a week, I don't have to think about it. It's like, there it is. It shows up. He opens the package. He puts it all together. And actually he's enjo started to enjoy cooking. And so now that he's, you know, had the training wheels for this now, sometimes I don't have to always give him a whole, whole hello fresh meal. I could easily be like, Hey, there's salmon marinating in the refrigerator. There's a vegetable. I'm like, you know how to roast vegetables now. You know how to put the salmon in the air fryer or on the grill. You decide how you're going to cook it. Rock on with your bad self. And he's like, yeah, I got this. I'm covered. Right. So it's like, how do I set him up for success so that I set myself up for success so I can delegate this and then walk away from it? So start to think about, start to think about these things because so many of us just, we do, 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 and we give, give, give. And then by the time we, we have time for ourselves, we're like a freaking wet blanket. And we're like, I just, I just can't. So with this tiger time, it's really looking at what are you trying to accomplish? That's step one. And that's really a, a, where a lot of us miss the mark that we don't take the time to say, this is what I want. Then once I decide what I want, I have to put some tactics behind it, right? So if it's working out, no one's going to work out seven days a week. I, you're not going to start, you're not going to start seven days a week. And then trust me, life is going to life. And that seven days is going to easily, once some, you know, some of you listening are the all or nothing people. And if you can't hit seven days a week, you're going to be like, I might as well not work out. Raising my hand. I was that girl. I was seven days a week. I maybe took one day a week off, did yoga right? That was my like rest day. So tell yourself good, better, best. What makes a good workout? What makes a better workout? What makes the best workout? How many days a week? How long is that workout going to be? And you can get a great workout in 15 minutes. You can get a great workout at home. You can get a great workout with your body weight. Same thing with my nutrition. You know, it's always not about cutting everything out. It's about adding, you know, can I add in vegetables? Can I make sure that I have vegetables? You know, if I have four meals a day, can I make sure 50% of the time I have a meal, I have a vegetable. Boom. Great. Awesome. Um, can I make sure that it's, and then you know, that's good. Better is three out of the four. Best is four out of the four. All right. So do you see, do you see what I'm picking up where I'm putting down? We're starting to come up with these little benchmarks that I can easily achieve. And I can look back and say, you know what, this, I'm crushing it, right? I, I've blocked out the time in my calendar. I'm getting the things done that I want to get done. And I don't, I'm, st I'm, I'm stepping away from the stress. I'm stepping away from the overwhelm because I'm giving myself permission to take this time, to block out this time that, you know, on Sundays at four o'clock, I'm going to make sure I have food in the house. And that could be, that's my time to go to the grocery store, right? So it's like, you know, for me, Sunday morning, I sit down and I write out my list. 
And then I go to the grocery store Sunday evening while I'm making dinner. I'm, you know, prepping my my food. I only prep my lunch. I'm grilling chicken and I might be gr roasting some grilling or roasting vegetables that I can set aside and that's it. And it's it's an hour. That's not this half day thing. And I'm like putting everything in those little black little things. No, it's like I'm putting chicken, I'm cutting it up, throwing, throwing in some Tupperware in my refrigerator taking the vegetables, throwing some Tupperware in the refrigerator so that I'm ready to go. My salads are all bagged and all I have to do is just dump them out in a bowl when I'm ready to eat it. So ask yourself, what can be your tiger time? And if you're like, I don't know what could be my tiger time. I don't know how to like figure this out for myself. Holla, right? I, I'm Kim Jefferson around all the socials. I'm easily found, foundable, findable, findable. I'm easily found. I think that's the right words. Um, you know me, grammar is not my first forte, even though English is my primary and only language I speak. Um, so yeah, hit me up and just kind of let's set up some next action so that this is the year that you can actually say that you are going to crush it. All right, ladies, have a fabulous week and I will talk to you next week. Enjoy.